everybody, what's up? It is Sarah with the Unleashed Beauty. Welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, welcome. Today, if you cannot tell by this fresh face, we are going to do something a little bit different. I'm gonna be doing a full face of drugstore products, and you guys, nothing on my list is under $10. I have not tried any of these things before. We're about to see how it goes. Make sure that you like and share this video. Also, if you do not already subscribe to my channel, click that subscribe button and ring your notifications bell so that you guys always get notified. I do upload every Wednesday and Friday. If you don't wanna miss out on the fun, be sure to subscribe. Okay, are you guys ready? Let's do it. So to get started, let's prime this face. You guys, today I'm going in with the e.l.f. Poreless Face Primer. This one was $6. So let's see how it goes. This is really creamy. I am from a very small town in Kansas. I basically am in like a rural community in the middle of nowhere. And there are not a lot of um, places to shop near my home. So most of what you're going to see today came from our... Um, closest Walmart store and even though it's a super Walmart like you can get groceries there it's still pretty rinky dink tiny little place so they had about like when you go down an aisle in the store they had one side that was makeup and then half of another side and that was it so there are going to be a lot of repeat brands um, for instance there are a lot of wet and wild products in this one and that was just so that we could keep the price point under $10 per item. So I'm not um, here to promote anything wet and wild. I don't actually think I've ever even worn anything wet and wild, but there are a lot of those products in here. And I just wanted to kind of throw that out to you guys before you start wondering. The e.l.f. primer is on. Next up, we are going to do foundation. And for this one, we're gonna use the Maybelline New York Fit Me Matte and Poreless. This is the shade 112 Natural Ivory. I hope to God it matches. And this one was $5.28. I'm gonna go ahead and try this a couple of different ways. Usually I like to apply foundation with a kabuki brush. So that's how I'm gonna start this today. And I think we'll do half of the face with a brush and then half with a beauty blender and just kind of see how it works. So I'm gonna dab a little bit of this out, a little bit of this out onto the back of my hand. And I'm going in with my unique kabuki brush. This is my favorite my favorite, favorite brush. And I'm just gonna pick that up and we're gonna start kind of stippling this on. I may have to add more. I'm not sure how this is gonna go. Not really sure. So I'm just kind of stippling this on and pressing it into the skin. The shade's pretty close. I think we did good there. I've actually seen quite a few good reviews. If you're looking for a drugstore foundation. I've seen lots of reviews on this one and people really do seem to like it even over some other high-end uh, foundations. So I was pretty excited to find this one. We can give it a shot and see what we think. I don't love the way that this is laying on my skin right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and do the other side with a beauty blender and then we'll come back and kind of pounce that down and see. It's just really sitting kind of on top of my pores and just, it, it doesn't look very nice. <laughs> Let's see if we can fix it. We're gonna go in with a beauty blender. Okay, it does seem to be applying a little bit better with a sponge versus a brush. And some liquid foundations are just that way. I found that some are just a lot easier to lay down if you use a sponge. So this must be one of those. Either that or it just wasn't happy with the brush we were using. I do have my Beauty Blender damp. Some people prefer to use them dry. I like to use them damp. I feel like if you get your sponge damp first, it tends to pick up a lot of excess. If you can see like kind of lines and stuff, picks up a lot of excess products so that you're not caking on your face and it gives you just more of a natural finish. All right. Time to bust out the mirror and see how we're faring. I'm giving it the benefit of the doubt so far, but it is laying in my lines pretty heavily. So I don't love that. And another thing about this, the more I blend, the more I feel like I'm just picking up foundation. And we've got, I have um, a pretty good sized blemish healing over here. So I've got a lot of discoloration in that spot and it doesn't seem to be doing much there for coverage. 
but the foundation is on. So moving on to concealer today, I'm going to use, this is a Wet n Wild Mega Glow Makeup Stick Conceal. And the color on this one is 807 Follow Your Bisque. I just thought this one was cute because it's just this, um, kind of chubby little stick. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and apply this one. Oh, and the price on this one is $3.98. And this one actually is a little yellow and I feel like it is actually picking up some of the foundation with it. Okay, so I'm going to go in again with a beauty blender and just start blending that out under the eyes and down the center of the face. I should try to stick a little bit of it on where I have that blemish, but the way that it pulled foundation up off of my face, I don't know that that would be the best plan. I will say it's blending out easily, but it has kind of a, it's kind of like a greasy, waxy texture. Just for fun, let's see what this does on my blemish. Okay, you guys, I literally feel like I got zero coverage from that concealer, like none. And it's already really settling into my lines under my eyes. I have a feeling this is not going to be good when we go in with our setting powder. I'm freaking out already. I'm a little worried. Okay, so to set this concealer, we are going to use the Wet n Wild. I warned you guys in the beginning, there's going to be a lot of Wet n Wild in this video. The Wet n Wild Photo Focus Translucent Setting Powder. This one retails at $5.98 and it's pretty big. How much is in here? This is going to be 20 grams or 0.7 ounces. So this is a fairly good size container. So I kind of hope that I like it. Okay. So I just tapped some of that out into the lid and I'm going to apply again. This is a damp sponge. We'll see how it does with these lines. And I'm going to go ahead and put this down the center of my face and we'll just kind of let that bake while we do bronzer. All right, for bronzer today, we're going to use the Wet n Wild Color Icon Bronzer. This one is called Sunset Strip Tease, and it's pretty. Does it work? Price on this one is $3.98. I love the little leaf imprint in this bronzer. I don't know if you guys can see that. Super cute. So we're going to go ahead and go in with this one. I am already having issues with that setting powder. I thought that I might really like it. But literally every bit of foundation that I've applied is being picked right back up. So I don't know, that could be the foundation. It could be the primer that we started with. So I'm going to try to use a really soft touch as we get this bronzer laid down. I feel like this bronzer is a little more warm on the skin than... It looks in the pan and it's giving me a little bit of an orangey vibe with my with my coloring I swear I'm not here to complain about everything <laughs> it's just the way it's working out today I'm gonna go in with a smaller brush and we're not gonna do a whole lot of detail on the nose but let's get a little bit down here oh it is just pulling every bit of foundation back up off my skin it's a good look right let's try to fix this if we can. Oh no, 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 no. Do you guys see this? Let me zoom in. This is so bad. Hopefully you guys can see what this is doing on my nose. All of my foundation is just cakey. Um, it's been pulled up where I used a brush and tried to apply bronzer. There's literally no foundation left on my skin. I don't know if it's the foundation or if it's the primer that we used and also look under my eyes. So much creping and creasing and just, we're going to take off this bake. I'm going to zoom back out for a minute and we're going to go ahead and um, continue on. Okay, this is so frustrating for me. Um, just seeing how bad this looks and how much foundation has been pulled back off my face. So I'm thinking that the e.l.f. Poreless Primer, just maybe it doesn't work well with this foundation or maybe it's not working well with my skin. So I made the decision to go ahead and take this off and we are going to start again and we're actually going to skip the primer. So I'm going to go wash this off. We're going to try take two.
With the bronzer on, we will next go into blush and highlight. So for this, I got a two for deal, you guys. This is the Wet n Wild, again, um, Hello Halo Blush Lighter. So this is a highlight blush combo. These come in a couple of different shades, at least three at my store. And this one is called Highlight Bling. This blush color I thought was really pretty and I didn't realize until I got it home how much shimmer there actually was to the blush. So we'll see how it works. It's just a really pretty kind of peachy tone though with a little bit of gold reflect to it. It's a little more shimmery than I would normally like in a blush, but we're gonna have fun with this one. Now it's time for the highlight product in this palette. So I'm gonna go in with a fan brush and this one is very dusty. <laughs> There's a lot of like brush back fallout and it's very glittery. And that's not something I typically like in a highlight. I prefer that really soft glow. And this is, um, it's a little more of like a chunky highlight than I typically like and very dry. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and lay that highlighter down on the other cheekbone and right down the center of the nose on the tip a little, just a little. Christmas is over. Y'all don't need to be running around looking like Rudolph out there. So there is the blush and highlighter. Let me know down in the comments what you think of these blush lighter sets. Again, I think it's a really cool concept, um, just not a, a really great formula. It's okay, but I don't love it. Next up, we're gonna do brows. So we're going with another Wet n Wild product. I told you guys, pickings were slim at my store. Didn't have a lot to go with. Um, and to keep it under $10 for every single item, I did go with a lot of, a lot of Wet n Wild. So this is the Wet n Wild Ultimate Brow Retractable Brow Pencil in Ash Brown. This one retails for $2.98. So you do get a spoolie on one end and then on the other side. This one kind of reminds me of the um, Anastasia Brow Definer Pencil. It's got that spoolie on one end and then on the other end, it's got that kind of triangle shaped, you know, wider pencil. So that's, that's pretty cool. Um, I really do like that Anastasia pencil as far as a brow liner goes. I don't use brow liners a ton, but I do like that one. So let's see, we're going to comb out these brows to start with. If you caught my brow tutorial, you will know you always start, or I always start by kind of giving the brows a quick little grooming. If you have not watched that video, I will put a card up somewhere for you to go check it out. Okay, so let's go ahead and go in and start lining out this brow. This one's a little bit light for me, but I think it'll work. We're gonna make it work. We're making this whole face work today. Okay, are you guys ready to hear my thoughts on the brow pencil? So color-wise, I like it. I'm good with it. It's very, very close to the color that I needed. Performance wise, it's a little bit waxy, a little bit hard to get the product to actually um, lay down onto my skin and into my brows the way that it should. So I didn't have the level of control that I wanted because I was actually trying so hard just to get that color to come off onto my face and it was kind of a struggle. But um, so far out of everything I've tried, this is probably my favorite product I've used. So, um, and this one again was $2.98. So kind of can't go wrong for that. Okay, you guys. So now we are going to get into my favorite part, which is the eyes. We're going to start today with the wet and wild again. I know, I know. And sadly enough, this one didn't even come from Walmart. Um, this is one that I had ordered off of Ulta when I placed an order for some other things for something else I've got coming for you guys. Um, but this is the photo focus eyeshadow primer. So we're going to see how this one works. I don't always tend to use eyeshadow primer. It really depends on what products I'm applying, um, how I'm laying them down, whether or not they're really bold colors. And if I, if it's shadow that I've worn before and I just know that to get it to perform the way that I want, I'm going to need a primer. So I don't really have a ton to go off of to judge this one. We're just gonna see what happens. I don't know, it's a little bit tacky. It's not as much as um, the one that I'm used to. I typically use Unique's Moodstruck eyeshadow primer and I love 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 that one. It's 
pretty legit. Like you have to really work to blend out your shadows sometime, but you do know if you use that primer, they're not going anywhere. But it is a very tacky formula. This one is a little bit tacky, but not much. And it is when you when you get this out of the tube, the product itself is really nice and creamy. So it's pretty easy to work with. For the eyeshadow today, I'm strangely excited about this. This is the Maybelline New York The City Mini Palette in 510 Blushed Avenue. You guys, this one is actually really pretty. This one retails for $7.48, and I was just loving these colors. I don't know if that came into focus or not, um, but this one's just really, really pretty. I These colors speak to me. Anytime you get the plums, the mauves, the, the really warm, like, pinky tones, I'm so in. So we're going to start out with this kind of soft brown tone. It's a very light, like tan. We're going to use that as a transition today. Ton of fallout in the pan right off the bat. I'm surprised at how much pigment there is there for, wow, okay. For the price of this palette and all of the fallout, I just thought that this was going to be really chalky and I wasn't expecting much color payout. And it actually, um, I mean, there's quite a bit of color there. So let's go ahead and do the other eye. And I'm using my Unique Fluffy Crease Brush for this. This is just a really common um, brush for me to use through the crease here. You can kind of apply and blend out really easily in the same little swoop with this one. I am not mad at this so far. I'm gonna grab a blending brush and just kind of blend right along the top edge there. We're gonna go along and buff out that top edge. So we're gonna use this nude color for that. And I've got this on a regular crease brush just so that I can get in a little tighter. And just in really small circles, I'm just going to buff that all along that top edge. I think this nude is probably in here as kind of a highlighter, but there's no hope of that highlighting anything for me because it's so light and I'm so pale. So it's one of those colors that would just kind of blend into my skin and it's just all over with. We're gonna try to use all of these shades. So let's go in next with this kind of mauve -y tone here and we're gonna apply that into the crease, just right into the crease to start kind of deepening that up a little. Such a pretty color. I'm really impressed with this palette, to be completely honest. There's a whole lot more color payout here than I thought there would be, so. You go, Maybelline. I'm bringing this down onto the outer corner of the lid as well. Okay, we're just blending along the top edge there. Blending that pinky tone into the brown transition shade that we laid down to start with. There's a little bit more of a challenge in blending this one than there was that first shade, but it's okay. We're working with it so far. No harm, no foul. All right, and lastly for these mattes, we're gonna go ahead and pick up this plum shade. So I'm just kind of laying this down right on the outer corner of the eye. It's a very pretty shade. It's a very like muted plum color. I feel like this one's not as pigmented as the previous shadows were, but you can still see it and it isn't leaving. I mean, it's a little patchy. That actually went on pretty smoothly. Let's go ahead and do the other eye and then we'll come back and blend. Now I'm just going to take a clean blending brush and we're going to go all through here. So using the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Eyeshadow Primer and the Maybelline New York The City Mini Palette, we went ahead and finished these eyes. I will say I'm impressed. I did not expect there to be um, so much color payout from this. I also expected it to be pretty patchy and it really wasn't. Um, there's a lot of fallout in the pan and on my face, but for the most part, this wasn't a bad palette to work with, and um, this one is $7.48, so I mean, the shimmers, I will say, the, the biggest downfall aside from the fallout with this one, the shimmers have very, very little wow factor to them. They're basically a satin shade. I did pop a little bit of my Wet n Wild Hello Halo blush lighter on there. I used the highlight for my inner corner highlight, and then I used a little bit of the blush color 
over the top of the peach that I had on from the eyeshadow palette and it still just didn't do a ton. But overall, the colors are very pretty. It blended easily and it, it wasn't patchy. So I'd call that a win. This one probably just took over as my favorite product so far today. Now we're gonna do lashes. And by lashes, I actually mean mascara. We're not applying a fake lash. And we're going to use the Maybelline New York, the Colossal Waterproof Mascara in Glam Black. It's this one right here, you guys. This one sells for $5.84. So let's go ahead and get these lashes done. I have really short lashes and not a ton of volume, so it takes a bit to impress me when it comes to mascara. I've got to have that length and volume, and so far, all we're doing is making a mess. This has dropped chunk on my cheek. I've got it on my lid. Now that's no fault of the mascara, but my own. So this is definitely not a one coat and done. We're going to have to work at this one. So let's go ahead. I'm going to leave this mess and we'll try to clean it up at the end and see how easy this one is to take care of. All right, let's see how many coats this takes to give me a decent set of lashes. Okay, you guys, so I stopped counting my coats of mascara. <sighs> I'm pretty certain I have seven, maybe eight coats. It could be more. I don't know. I made such a mess that I did have to add in a liner. I threw on a little bit of a liquid liner. Um, this one I'm not even going to name because it did not come from my drugstore haul. Obviously, I wasn't planning on wearing that. I just had to find a way to hide the globs of mascara lining my eyes. So let's go ahead and jump into lips next. We're gonna use the Rimmel London Stay Matte Liquid Lip Color in the shade 210 Rose and Shine. I love a good liquid lip, so um, let's see what happens with this one. This color looks like it's going to be so gorgeous with this eyeshadow. This is a very sheer shade, which I was not expecting in a liquid lipstick. It also has an odd smell, you guys. It smells like a mix between like baby lotion or baby shampoo and chemical. I don't know how else to describe it. Now the color is really pretty, but it's also very patchy. I'm gonna stop there. I've kind of got two layers on. A lot of times you can build up a liquid lip, but with this one, I feel like the more I apply, the more patchy it tends to get. So we're just gonna leave it there. Um, so that one, you guys, if I didn't tell you, uh, the Rimmel London Stay Matte Liquid Lip Color retails for $4.78. So all together, the drugstore products that we grabbed for this face ran $56.77, which is awesome, right? Um, if you think about it, a lot of times I'll spend more than that on one product. I just did a full face for $56.77, but let's talk final thoughts. If you stuck around through all the craziness today, congratulations. Just so you guys know, I'm still trying to get the hang of this whole YouTube thing and having to record. I'm very used to going live on Facebook. And so it's just, you hit a button once and that's it. Um, so editing's gonna be super fun for this as there were multiple times during the video where I stopped filming. So let's talk about this face for a minute. I would definitely say if you're anything like me and you have combination skin and your skin is starting to be more along the lines of mature, um, I'm 38, you guys, almost, almost 38 years old. And my skin has changed a lot over the years and I have to be a little bit more mindful over um, not only my skincare, but also the cosmetics that I put on my face. And I feel like this primer for me did not cut it. This was the e.l.f. Poreless Face Primer. It's too heavy for me and I feel like um, it really created more slip than necessary for this foundation, which is next on the list. The foundation, I have seen so many good reviews on this that I don't want to count it out yet. So I think I'll probably will just do my foundation um, with the Fit Me Matte and Poreless and see how I like it without a primer. With the primer, 
And what I'm looking at right now, it's settled in my lines so bad. It looks very blotchy and uneven. It's transferring constantly. So like when I move my hair um, and like if a fingernail or whatever has, has grazed my face or right here above my brow, you can tell I had moved hair. It's just pulling foundation completely off my skin. So is that the foundation? Is it the primer? Is it the way that the two are reacting with each other? I have no way to know that. I would love to give this foundation another shot on its own just because of all of the good things that I've heard about it. But as of right now, um, I would rather spend money on higher quality foundation than use. I used a lot of this today, you guys, um, and I'm just not loving the result. This can just go in the garbage right now. This was the Wet n Wild Mega Glow Makeup Stick Concealer, and it, for me, was little to no coverage. I don't like the way that it feels. It pulled foundation back off with it as I was applying it. It was just a bust, a total bust for me. Another total bust for me today was the Maybelline The Colossal Mascara. I should not have to apply seven to eight coats, maybe more, of mascara to my eyes, make a giant mess in the process, and still only wind up with lashes that look like this. Um, that's just no. It's a big no for me. You guys, with the amount of products that I had to put on for this one application, um, I could have invested a little bit more in a far better quality mascara. This is just nothing I will ever use again. Ever. I would not recommend this mascara. The translucent powder was another bust for me. This was way too heavy, way too drying. Um, I feel like it aged me a lot. And also I noticed as time went on, I could really see where I had applied this. There was a little bit of discoloration. Um, that could just be the way that this works with the foundation, the concealer. Again, you guys know I was already having problems with my base, but for me, this is a no. Let's move on to the wins, shall we? I'm kind of on the fence about the Wet n Wild Ultimate Brow Retractable Eyebrow Pencil. It worked well enough, and I think if I were in a bind, but you really have to work to get that color to transfer, so it, I'm still, I'm kind of on the fence with this one. I don't know. Let me know if you guys have used it. The Wet n Wild Color Icon Bronzer in Sunset Striptease. I like this bronzer. It's a matte bronzer. You get pretty decent color payout. Um, the only thing that I don't love is that it's a little too warm and it pulls kind of orange. If I could get this in a different shade, it might be worth it. Will I go out and find that other shade? No, because I like what I've got. But um, if you're shopping for a decent drugstore bronzer, I would say check out those color icons from Wet n Wild because it seems so far so good to be wearing um, okay. The Wet n Wild Hello Halo Blush Lighter. You guys, I still say this is such a cool concept to have that blush and highlighter all in one. And this was very, very pretty. The blush color is very nice. The highlight was way too dry, way too glittery for me, but it did work well with the eyeshadow. Again, I can kind of take it or leave it with this one. But as for the products that we used today, it was definitely on the winning side of the world. All right, these two I've got to review hand in hand, even though they're two different brands. So I used the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Eyeshadow Primer with the Maybelline New York The City Mini Palette in Blushed Avenue. And I don't know which one credit goes to, but I was so pleasantly surprised by this eyeshadow. I will say one thing I don't love about this eye primer, you guys, is that um, I feel like it's, it's pretty drying. My eyelids look dry. And I think that that was the primer because I was kind of noticing that a little bit as it dried down before I went in with the eyeshadow. The eyeshadow colors though, um, really popped for a palette at this price point. I was quite impressed with the way that these wore. Again, the shimmers um, didn't live up to my expectations, but the mattes worked out just fine. They blended fine. All is well, so um, I'm going to call this one a win. The Rimmel London Stay Matte Liquid Lip Color. This one almost breaks my heart because I really do like this color, but you guys, it doesn't feel good on my lips. It feels dry. It feels sticky. It feels heavy, and I don't love the smell. I can still smell that baby chemical smell. I don't, I don't have any other way to explain it than that. It's like somebody mixed baby shampoo in with the cleaning supplies. I don't know. I don't know what it is, but it's not fun. It was also patchy. 
it just, I wanted to love it so, so badly and I just can't. So that's going to be it for today's video. You guys let me know down in the comments if you use any of these products, if you've tried them before, um, what you think of them. Also be sure to like this video and share it with your friends. And if you do not already subscribe to this channel, click that subscribe button and ring the notifications bell so you guys don't miss any new uploads. I've got some really fun content planned for you all. I can't wait to start pushing that out. Um, thank you so much for checking this video out. I hope you all have a beautiful day. Be kind to one another. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.